What up everybody, Instruct the Beats back again here with our part whole model and today we're going to be using it for subtraction. So let's take the tape off and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to develop a part whole model to solve a subtraction word problem. So we're going to kind of fly through this. If you, uh, if this is your first lesson you're watching, check out our part whole model for addition. Uh, we're going to spend some more time on this, but again, a part whole model visually shows the relationships of the different parts to the whole. We talked a lot about this last lesson. So today we're going to be giving you the whole and you're going to be finding one of the missing pieces. And we're going to show you uh, why this is a great tool to organize and develop that information that they're giving you. When would you use this? If you're given different parts and you want to find the whole or if you're given the whole and want to find the part. So last lesson we focused on this top part. This lesson we're going to focus on giving you the whole and trying to find that missing piece. So here we actually have the same exact addition equation as our last lesson, but we last lesson we gave you all the parts and you're trying to find the whole. So here, okay, we have this. We now can label our whole here, all right? Uh, we have our five, okay? We're missing a part, and then we have our nine right here, okay? So we have kind of, we have part A, part B, and, oh, sorry, part B, and we're looking for part C. So my question mark, is going to go right there. I'm not done yet until I find this question mark. Now again, the cool thing is you can take this and write an algebra equation now. So you could do five plus X plus nine equals 24. So you're now taking it off the model and taking this next step to write the algebra equation. Now, the cool thing about this is we're not just teaching keywords, we're showing the students the relationship between addition and subtraction. So um, I always start, I just use a blank for these, okay? The algebra equation is kind of that next step. And so the first thing you want to do is you want to combine the pieces that you know. You want to find out, okay, how much of my tape diagram do I already know? So you combine the 5 and 9, and you're going to do 5 plus 14 equals 24, okay? And so now you could guess and check here, but you want to show that relationship between addition and subtraction, those inverse operations. And what you're trying to do is get rid of the 9 and 5 to find this missing question mark. So if you wanted to get rid of the 9 and the 5, okay, to find out what this question mark is, you're going to subtract them away from the whole, okay? If you're getting rid of them, this is no longer 24. So you could rewrite this as subtraction and do 24 minus 14 equals that, and obviously your answer would be 10. So this missing piece up here is 10. So we can replace that and put a 10 right there. So it's kind of visually showing them why you can subtract instead of just telling them and having them memorize it. It's sh um, showing them why you can subtract to help you find the missing piece of an addition equation. A great lesson in fact families. So here we have Tammy again if you're with us for our first lesson and we're going to do our sides check. Okay, It's the same exact, well it's not the same exact problem, um, but it's the same problem, same numbers as before except now we're going to give you the whole and you're going to find a missing piece. So my my statement should say the ice cream cost blank dollars. Okay, so now I want to go back. I want to identify anything about money, okay, and anything about ice cream. My statement's allowing me to figure out what's important. So Tammy went to the mall and spent $25. I'm circling that because it's about my statement. Okay, we got to start taking students away from just circling numbers and not knowing why. Why? To understanding why they're circling in the important information. Okay, she bought a watch for $7, again, circling it because it's about money and that's what my statement's about. And she bought a purse for $15. And she bought an ice cream. How much did the ice cream cost? Okay, so I'm gonna draw a part whole model here. She spent $25, okay, so here's my $25. She bought a watch for $7, okay, here we go. Make my watch $7. She bought a purse for $5, so the five needs to be a little bit smaller than the seven. Okay, I'm gonna label that as purse. And then she also bought an ice cream. Now I thought about editing this, but this goes back to being neat, okay? She did not buy a purse for $5, she bought a purse for $15, but what happened was when I wasn't neat, I circled exactly over top of that one. And how many times does that happen to your students, right? So let me erase this and fix it. So 15 should be at least twice as much, there we go as seven, so this is gonna be 15. And in my classroom, I'd use it as a great teaching moment. Even when I'm rushing through it, I make mistakes, right? So you can't rush through it and make a silly mistake of circling over a one and thinking that's a five and not a 15. And so then here's my ice cream, okay? 
And this is where my question marks are me. I don't know that. That's what I'm trying to figure out based on my statement. So my statement's allowing me to know where to put my question mark. So I need to combine what I know, okay? So I'm gonna combine the pieces that I know, and that's gonna be $22, okay? And so now I wanna know, okay, 22 plus what is going to equal my 25? And you could write the algebra equation over here too, just to continue to practice that for some of your high students. And Again, I want to get rid of the 7 and the 15 to help me find this missing piece. So if I want to get rid of this from my tape diagram, that means I have to subtract it from my whole. And when you subtract it, right, you could do 25 minus 22 equals 3. And this is a much better way for them to understand than you just saying, okay, when you're finding a missing add-end, you subtract, right? and you use your fact family knowledge. That's great, that's a good teaching, but it's better if they actually understand what they're doing instead of just memorizing a step. That conceptual understanding will lead them to the abstract thinking of writing the algebra equation later in life. And so the ice cream cost $3. Now, if you notice right here, my tape diagram wasn't perfect because I didn't know this missing piece, and so I didn't know it was gonna be three, and my three is about the same size as my seven. What I tell my kids is, that's okay. Okay, because you don't know that quantity, you aren't going to know. You can use a little bit of estimation skills, right, to know that, okay, if I have 15 already, um, that number's got to be less than 10. And you can kind of teach them those estimation skills. But in the long run, as long as they're showing the relationship between the numbers they have, you know, and this isn't like all the way over here, um, to me, that's okay. But that depends on your teaching, right? I'm just teaching you what I would do in my classroom. Um, and then you can take it and you don't have to do exactly what it is. You can manipulate it. You can make it your own. And so that's just something I tell my students. If you don't know that piece, it's okay if it's not exactly perfectly drawn because you didn't know. But you should be able to use a little bit of estimation skills to make it about the right size. So now I have written my equation and I checked it by writing it back in the statement. Let's do a U try. So here's a U try problem. Okay. And I, I made it a little bit bigger numbers because this is not just a third grade or fourth grade or fifth grade thing. Um, you can use tape diagrams all the way through middle school. You can use them all the way down to kindergarten. Okay, you just really have to make it your own for your classroom. Um, but if you are a student who's watching this to learn how to do it and you don't know how to do the bigger numbers, you can just pause it. After you do your tape diagram, you can just use your calculator to help you solve it and that's okay as long as you're visually understanding what's happening. But go ahead and push pause, try to solve it, and then push play to see how you did. So my statement here, if I'm doing my sides check still, okay. How many students are in fifth grade? So I'm gonna go back, I'm looking for anything about students, and then in particular anything about fifth grade or any other keywords. So there are 1,123 students. Again, I'm not circling that That's because it's a number, I'm not being a number grabber, I'm circling it because it's about my statement. My statement's about students, I identify things about students. 245 students are in third grade, same reason for circling it, 489 students are fifth grade, and then the rest of the students are in fifth grade. And I want to know how many students are in fifth grade. So I'm going to draw my tape diagram. And I know this is a part whole model because they gave me the whole. And then they gave me all the different parts of it. And my whole for my tape diagram is 1,123 students. Okay. I like to label that what, what it is when I can. Um, and I know I had third grade, fourth grade, and then the rest were in fifth grade. All right. So I know uh, 245 is quite a bit smaller than 1,000. So I'm just going to kind of guesstimate right here. And I'll say 245 and I'll put a third grade right here again, making sure I label it. I know if I round this up to 500, it's about twice as big as third grade. So I'm going to draw one about twice as big right here. Okay. Fourth grade right there, 489 again, students. And then the rest of them are in fifth grade. Okay. And that's where my question mark is going to be. So again, you could take that and write the algebra equation using the variable, or you could just solve it using this. So now I've done a statement, I've identified, I've developed my plan. Now, even if they don't know how to add or subtract correctly, they know what they need to do. They need to find out what they have, right? They need to add these, this part together, and they're going to get 734. So, so far they know 734 students, and they're looking for the rest of them, okay? Well, again, you want to get rid of the pieces that you already know if you're trying to find that missing third piece. And so, I need to subtract this part away from my whole to help me find that missing piece. So really what you're doing here is you're doing 734, right? Plus something is giving you 1,123. And then to solve that, right, you're using your inverse operation, using your fact family knowledge to help you solve it. But you're not just having your students memorize it, right? 
you are showing them visually what they're doing. And when you do that, it should be 389. So there are 389 fifth graders. There you go. And the other cool thing about this is if you want to teach your students to check it, once you fill in your tape diagram, if you add all your pieces, it should equal your whole. And again, if you notice, my 389 is actually bigger than my 480, um, my 489 right here because I didn't know what it was. And to me, that's okay. Um, for you, if you want to go back and have them fix it, you can. Um, but really, that relationship was shown right here. And then I kind of used my estimating skills. I was a little bit off. But again, estimating is okay. You don't have to be exactly right. Um, because 389 is pretty close to 489 in the grand scheme of things. Um, but it shouldn't be bigger. But that's just up to you. I would tell my students that's okay because you didn't know what that number was. So we want you to take with you, part whole models can be used to help students visually see the relationship between addition and subtraction. You're not just teaching them fact family rules, you're visually showing it in every word problem they do, they can see, oh, wait a minute, this is really an addition problem, but to help me solve it, I have to subtract. Okay, I have to bring in that inverse operation. And that's what you want. You don't want them memorizing keywords and saying, okay, I said the rest, I have to subtract. You want to show them why that's happening. Why? It's not about what you're doing. It's, a, it's about why you're doing it, right? So when you draw that out, they're making the connection between this is really an addition problem, but I'm looking for a missing add-in, so I have to subtract. And that's what part whole models can be really, really good for. And again, taking it to the next level by writing that algebra equation. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of different options online. We'd love to have you join our Instructor Beats family by clicking that subscribe button liking the video and let it commenting letting us know where you're watching it from uh, you can follow us on all our social media accounts we'd love to have you join those as well again thank you so much instruct beats out